To me, that was the greatest single football game I ever saw. I think it was the greatest array of players in one given game. Many, many of them are now in the Hall of Fame. The Waterfields, the Van Brocklins, the Grahams, Lavelles, Groses, they were innumerable. The 1950 NFL championship game between the Los Angeles Rams and the Cleveland Browns featured 11 future Hall of Famers. No other game in history can make that claim. Both teams had sleek offensive attacks that stamped them as pioneers in the pro football world. And yet until 1950, the Browns had not played a game in the National Football League. We had heard a lot of the Browns. They have dominated that All-American League that we're in. And Otto Graham, of course, was one of the greatest uh, throwers of all time. And their team had great balance. They had some awfully fine football players. You know, when you talk about Graham and Max Speedy, Lavelle, Dub Jones, Marion Motley, those are football names that are pretty well etched in history, you know. The Rams had their share of all-timers at 1950. They established an NFL standard, averaging nearly 40 points per game. One more element made this game a compelling study. The Rams left Cleveland that year to go to Los Angeles, and we replaced the Rams in Cleveland. So here they were coming back this next year, having been in Cleveland, playing in Cleveland against the new Cleveland team. We went back to Cleveland on a very, very cold day, and the field was frozen. It was a bitter cold day. It, the seesawed back and forth. Uh, Waterfield was doing a great job in there, and so was uh, Graham. It was Waterfield and the Rams who exploded out of the starting blocks on the game's very first play from a scrimmage. I just outran the linebacker who was trying to cover me. So I was wide open, and Waterfield just lofted the ball to me and it accomplished about 80 yards for a touchdown. Good way to start the game. <laughs> we were very pleased with it because we'd been working on it for three or four days. Brown's quarterback, Otto Graham, then reaffirmed his greatness. He overcame two first-half deficits and passed the Browns into the lead in the third quarter. But two touchdowns in a span of 21 seconds regained the Rams' advantage at 28-20. As the temperature plummeted into the teens, Graham engineered a fourth quarter comeback that still to this day commands admiration. The final of nine completions culminated a scoring drive that brought the Browns to within a point with just over four minutes to play. leading going into about three minutes of the end of the game and all we had to do was control that ball we couldn't make a first down so we had to kick and we didn't, didn't have much time maybe a minute to go Graham got out of a deep hole several times he scrambled around he kept the ball alive one time it was fourth and 19 and somehow he made it it was vintage Graham a large part of the reason why, in 10 seasons with the Browns, he quarterback in 10 championship games. Skillfully, he had the Browns at the 10-yard line with 30 seconds on the clock. It was at this point I sent in the place-kicking unit, and our guys in the sideline started shaking hands with each other and as if the game and it was over. <laughs> this was a cold, raw day, and I, uh, I said, don't do that. I had a feeling it was bad luck or something, but, it, but we settled down quickly. And watch Lou Groza win the first of three NFL championships for the Cleveland Browns of the 1950s. We got beat by a 17-yard field goal by Grosso that I still don't think went through the goalpost, but <laughs> they gave it to him, so that's the way it stood. Both teams had super players. Uh, All-Americans, uh, it was a concentrated group of athletes on both teams. 
And uh, the fact that we were able to pull it out uh, really keynoted the start of the success of the Browns over the years.